The fix for anterior pelvic tilt, so that's when you are arching your back like so, where your pelvis is tilting forward, that causes imbalance in the pelvis on the outside and inside and having um, issues with pelvic floor dysfunction. So the exercise that um, I focus on, and um, it's like the whole body, but let's just start with this one. Let's just go through the process of determining what muscle is. So if, if the front of the body is holding on to this pelvis, but the front is weak enough that it allows the dropping of the pelvis, my, this is what the thinking should be. I want to make sure that the front starts getting stronger to lift this, and the back of the body is giving cueing to for the front to start working. You see, when we are activating the front, we want the activation of the front of the body. We need to decrease the volume of cueing coming from the back. If the back of the body starts cueing to work too much, that means I'm gonna go into this movement. When it does not quiet down, the front does not get that activation and that signaling to try to contract, to try to lift my dropped forward pelvis. Make sense, right? So don't be all focused on the front. You also need to focus on the back. So going back to what exercise do I need to do to do those? I'm not going to go strengthen or do push-ups for the front and start stretching my back. I need to position my body in such fashion that those two things are happening at the same time because that's what has to happen. So I'm going to go back to see how do babies teach their body how to coordinate its contraction and its movement. The exercise that I like is what we all did as babies. I'm going to lay down on my back with the agenda to close this lower spine gap. That means now I'm activating the front of my body to grab my pelvis, let me grab this. So right now, it's my pelvis is like so, I'm going to activate my body to bring my pelvis up and close that gap in the lumbar, in the lower back here. And now that I've done it, my goal is to make sure my spine's elongated I keep that gap closed, which requires my front to work and my back of the body muscles to relax and let go of the contraction. And then bring one leg up and bring the other leg up. In the, processing, in the process of bringing the other leg up, I wanna make sure my body does not move down. So it's stabilizing, the front is stabilizing with the back, regardless of what I do with my legs. In fact, if I had no legs, I should be able to do that practice of keeping my pelvis neutral, engaging the front, and with the back quieting to allow the front to do its thing and to shine. Now that I've done that, that's just the front and back. I want to make sure that the sides of my body are also well practiced and they know how to be and how to work with the front and back portion of my body because that's the direction that those muscles go. They start from, from the midway to the spine in the lower back area and they go up to the front, around the body, to the front, to the pubic bone, and actually the fourth layer goes all the way up to here. So am I able to close that gap and go side and hold and come
come back to neutral and go side this way. I'm not using my legs to then move my body. Everything is moving in unison, like so. This is a great practice to really work on what's not happening for pelvic stability. This is a great practice for anterior pelvic tilt and posterior pelvic tilt. It's a great exercise for pelvic stability and for pelvic floor dysfunction. I'm Dr. Shaki from Core Pelvic Floor Therapy right here in Irvine, Orange County. And uh, you can find me by accessing the information in the description box. Thanks for watching.